Uh, thank you for spending your uh, morning with us if you're here in the, the U.S. Um, and I will go ahead and get started into the topic. Um, when it comes to VxRail, one of the things that I, I like to start out with is that we very much um, take security with VxRail very seriously. And we not only look at um, how we build security into the physical componentry of the offering, but also how we, we do things from a security response, um, vulnerability response, and, and taking security into account all the way through some of the automation and lifecycle management and updating that we are doing as well. Um, and if we, we start to un, unpack some of the things that we are doing with security, um, starting with building it in at every layer, and you'll see this be something that I, I reiterate through today's conversation, we start with the supply chain of components that we have from some of the, the key physical componentry as well as the software that we include with VxRail. Obviously, we have things like our Intel processors um, and PowerEdge servers that are by their very own right designed very securely um, and with security capabilities built into those particular technologies. But it's also the software that we layer on top of that. The, the software from VMware, which includes vSphere as well as vCenter and vSAN, as well as our very own VxRail HCI system software. So we make sure that each one of those components um, is secure in its own right before we start to talk about integrating those things together. We also look at things like how do we make sure that we're delivering that same consistent security across all of the various ways that you can deploy VxRail, whether that's in a core data center, at the edge, or in some of our cloud-based deployments like with VCF or Cloud Foundation on VxRail. This is so that we can do things like ensure the availability, integrity, and, and provide that confidence that your workloads are going to have the right security applied to them no matter where they are actually deployed. And lastly, one of the things that we, we do uniquely with VxRail today is our full stack integration um, and, and updating with LCM where we provide secure, rapid, and automated um, updates for our VxRail customers. We have a general um, commitment to provide synchronous VMware release within 30 days. Um, we do a best effort when it comes to security patches, and I will get into great detail as I go through today on exactly some of the ways that we're able to accelerate how quickly um, we can get our vulnerability um, and security patches out by the way that we operate with some of our ecosystem partners, including VMware and Intel, um, when it comes to um, vulnerability type threats that have been identified. And you'll also see um, on the right-hand side of this image um, that there is a very secure development lifecycle process that we adhere to here at De Dell EMC, and I will get into that in uh, great detail here in just a little bit. So I mentioned that we build security into every layer. Um, and, and if you think about what we have with VxRail, very, very clearly it's a, a server-based architecture. Um, we leverage our own Dell EMC PowerEdge servers across the entire lineup. And Dell EMC PowerEdge servers are one of the most secure server offerings in the marketplace. Um, that's because of the way that we deal with some of the vendors that we work with on the componentry. Um, I, I reiterate um, Intel um, quite often because they are one of our, our largest partners um, and, and one of the biggest value drivers that we have um, inside the processing um, engines for VxRail. Um, but it goes beyond that, right? The, the Mellanox, the um, Broadcoms of the world, we make sure that we are working with all of them to make sure that we have secure ecosystems for the componentries that we're building into the VxRail platforms. And we're also making sure that when we add additional technologies like the recover point for VM, um, starter packs, um, or the optional power protect software and data protection suite for VMware, that we are including offerings that are also equally built with security consciousness in mind. This helps to make sure that you can minimize your own risk when it comes to security. Um, and we further provide guidance for security compliance, hardening, um, as well as tools that you can directly interface with some of our security vulnerability response teams through our product security office 
should you be the ones that actually identify a, a threat or a flaw, um, perceived flaw in the offering. Um, and this is really one of the, the ways that um, we're able to very quickly respond to issues as they do come up. And we want to make sure that we've got the right protection, um, not only protection application protection capabilities, um, but also the protection um, of that ecosystem that we have and supply chain that we have to ensure that what we build in a factory is exactly what's going to show up um, on your doorstep, on your dock, um, in your data center when it arrives. We also, of course, have the VMware software, um, vSphere, vSAN, um, optionally NSX for those customers that are deploying it as, as an a la carte offering or as part of the cloud foundation on VxRail. And we do also support the app defense layer in vSphere Platinum uh, with our VxRail offering. So great ways that you can apply some additional security to the VxRail environment. We look at cyber resiliency really from that top to bottom approach, right? So um, how do we make sure that we are adhering to federal compliance, things like um, going through the rigor of full-blown um, common cr criteria, um, as well as how do we apply things, additional hardening like STIG. Um, we've gone through the efforts to um, get our IPv6 ready certification um, and, and designations. Um, and making sure that we go through, not only saying that we are compliant to those things, but where we can, we go through the extra efforts of making sure that we follow through with certifications to back up that stance. That federal compliance um, really leads to some great success um, for VX Rail um, in showing the evidence that it's not just talking the talk, it's walking the walk as well with it. We also do things in that product security design point, right? I mentioned the secure development lifecycle, those uh, vulnerability response centers that we have um, where we are able to um, collectively, not only as Dell EMC, but also our component ecosystem, our partner ecosystem, VMware, Intel, et cetera, um, pull the appropriate parties into um, response action teams where we can very quickly diagnose what needs to be done, who's responsible for what, and very quickly churn up um, the, these isolated work groups that can work through how to best uh, resolve and address vulnerabilities that are brought to us. We also do things like secure serviceability, focusing on our secure remote support offering where we have um, VPN tunneling, for example, so that our, sec our security um, and, and serviceability teams um, can interact with our customer sets in a very secure manner. We also go through rigor when it comes to software integrity and making sure that code is appropriately checked in, virus scanned, um, et cetera, and that we're not bringing in um, software from foreign locations and places um, that might put additional risk into the, the build process and engineering design point of the offering. And I keep harping on the supply chain assurance as well, where we are able to track who has touched the offering, when, where, and why um, throughout the entire build, shipment, and delivery process to our end customers. We also do things when it comes to trade and compliance to make sure that we have um, the appropriate TAA compliance, ITAR, export compliance, and adhere to privacy laws where we need to um, when it comes to BXRAIL. This is what we mean by building in cyber resilience. It's everything from the compliance that, and certification efforts that we go through to the product security and how we build um, not only the, the VX rail from an engineering perspective, but build it in our factories, deliver it out to our end customers as well, and then adhering to that trade compliance and legal. And we're doing it across, again, all of the layers of the physical hardware stack and software stacks that are all what comprise of VX rail. So I think sometimes um, it, it helps to kind of um, double click on a few things. When we talk core edge cloud, I think sometimes um, th that can feel a little bit buzzwordy, um, but we have a diff number of different ways that VxRail is um, deployed at customers. Um, when I talk about edge, um, a lot of times folks will think of, of robo or small office, but edge can mean a number of things. It could mean um, a thousand various retail sites across the U.S. It could mean that you are doing 
um, edge processing for an IoT application that requires scale. Um, we can start very small with VxRail with two nodes. Um, here just um, in the next week or so, we are going to add support for an additional two-node deployment methodology where we can also use top of rack switching um, rather than just the, the two-node without top of rack switch. So we are really focusing on ways that we can expand and improve the ways um, that you can deploy VxRail at the edge. We also have offerings with VMware where we can do full data center as a service with VMware Cloud on Dell EMC, um, where you get the same exact consumption model that you would on something like a AWS uh, or VMware Cloud on AWS type offering. So it's the same um, interface portal. It's the same way that you would uh, provision out the, the workloads and the, the um, underlying resource sets um, for your VMware environment. Inside the core data center, and this is really where we started the efforts with VxRail, um, we have the ability to scale from three to 64 nodes um, with our VxRail offerings. Um, this can be utilized for anything from um, a refresh or modernization or an upgrade to an existing VxRail environment. Um, and, and again, really where we see a lot of the traction with VxRail. And it's where folks start, tend to start with a smaller project very quickly. They realize um, just how easy um, it is to manage VxRail. Um, and they start to work, move over more and more workloads. Um, essentially, anything that can run in a vSphere, vSAN environment is fair game to run on VxRail. Um, and we actually point folks to the VMware uh, compatibility guides for what is supported with VxRail in almost all circumstances. So a very vast ecosystem for support of various workloads and applications. We also have the ability to deploy VxRail in cloud-based environments. Um, whether that's VMware validated designs or with the VMware Cloud Foundation on VxRail, which is a part of our Dell Technologies cloud platform, um, or with Pivotal in our Pivotal Ready architectures. Um, we work very closely, obviously, with any of the Dell Technologies banner companies um, to make sure that we've got VxRail front and center as, as kind of that first out um, best effort, if you will, um, in working with our counterpart sister um, companies. Pivotal, for example, the Pivotal Labs are running VxRail. Their entire build centers are VxRail, um, and that becomes the basis of the Pivotal Ready architecture. Um, so it's a way that we can accelerate how quickly we get VxRail into the documentation on the best ways to deploy Pivotal in the latest and, and greatest ways. Now, what's interesting about all of these different ways that you can deploy VxRail, whether it's edge or core or cloud, it's the same identical node that's coming out of our factory no matter which way it's deployed. It kind of takes on a personality, if you will, during that first run and implementation experience on the persona that um, it's going to be utilized, whether it's an edge or two node deployment whether it's a, a typical VxRail, whether it's a part of the VCF on VxRail cluster. Um, there's even personas where um, utilizing smart fabric service capabilities, which are with our Dell power switches that provide the ability for single touch um, first run experience, standing up of the networking environment as well as scaling out of the environment, um, which is a great advantage that we have inside our, our family of companies and even our portfolio of offerings with Dell AMC. So um, common HCI system software, common node types that are being deployed across all of these different um, deployment scenarios. We're continually designing for security with VxRail. Um, whether that's um, the continuous security development processes that we have and, and building that into the, the code levels, the componentry levels, uh, but also taking into account that we are going to get feedback from our customers like you all, um, as well as our partner communities and resellers, as well as other vendors where we need to build in additional sustaining efforts where we can um, do things like further remediate and maintain the environments. Um, one of the advantages of having that automated lifecycle management is we're able to take you from one known good state to the next one in a very seamless manner 
and do so in an automated process where 100% of the support is going to come from Dell EMC. So you don't need to worry about was it an Intel driver? Was it a, a BIOS on the server? Was it something that went wrong with a, a VMware software component um, during an upgrade? We are going to take the call on that. We are going to drive it to completion and make sure that we put you back into a known good state for your operating environment, your workloads, with what we're sustaining. And I mentioned that we've got Andrea on the line. Um, she's continually adding new product capabilities and feature enhancement requests into our engineering teams so that we can add additional layers of security um, and compliance capabilities into our VxRail offerings um, and, and very rust, robust roadmap um, of features that she is tracking with our engineering design teams to make sure that we deliver against that and stay on the forefront of security um, in the HCI and the IT landscape. I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit and, and talk about um, how security might unfold in a typical attack sequence um, and how we build different levels of security and protection into the offering. Um, this very kind of simple framework here, a typical attack sequence is going to have some type of a um, an agent, if you will, trying to gain access into an environment, right? They're going to try to do that in any way that they can, test any boundaries. Um, here at, at Dell EMC, you know, there, there's things like phishing tests that they they put the, the employees through to make sure that people aren't one of the ways that um, folks are getting access into the environments. Um, but there's other things that obviously hackers will do to try to gain access into IT environments as well. Once they gain that initial access, there's typically a, a pattern of propagation that they will see how far, how wide, how deep they can get that particular attack planted into a, in, an ecosystem so that when they want to push the button to attempt the compromise or the breach, that they will have as large of an impact that they can possibly um, drive. This helps them to do things like demand extra monies or, or things like that, um, should that be their, their motivation. So that's what a typical attack sequence would look like. Very simple, um, gain access, propagate it, um, find a way to, to compromise that breach um, with things. Now NIST, which is a, a, a government um, agency and, and framework, um, provides a way that we can look at how do we identify attacks? What are ways that not only systematically, but also product-wise, um, we can um, identify an attack, look to protect um, the environment, the organization, um, before that might even um, happen, detect what's going on, and then, um, equally important, how does an organization respond to it from a product response level as well as from a corporate response level um, to, to what might be going on? And then also the recovery side. How do you get back to a clean state? How do you get back to an operational um, environment that can effectively go back to um, where it was prior to the attack? Now you can think about some of these things and there's been very large breaches that have occurred um, in, in the public um, eye. Um, Equifax is one that comes to mind. Their response and, and recovery mechanisms to some of the, the um, ways that they had to do things required public responses, PR efforts. Um, how do they make sure that the public knows what they're doing, why they're doing it, um, and, and also what some of that recovery is going to look like. So it's not just a framework around how products solve it, it also requires making sure that there is a way that um, corporately and operationally um, that they can respond to that type of an attack sequence. So if we break this down then, what are some of the ways that VX Rail specifically as a product aligns into the NIST security um, framework? And we do have a solution brief on this, by the way. It's out on uh, the, the web. You can find it um, if you look for VxRail and, and NIST in a search term, it should pop up. What you'll see here is VxRail has um, a, a number of different ways that from a product perspective, 
we have um, tools that help you, for example, identify things. What are the assets? What are the, the nodes? Where are those nodes? Um, and identifying what's in the IT environment. But there's also some things that a, a product is not going to be able to deliver upon, right? If I look in the protect pillar, um, a VX rail can't provide awareness training to people inside an organization. That has to be something that corporately um, and, and systematically um, organizations have ways that they train their people, their staff, um, have the process controls in place to make sure that um, if there are threats that are identified, what is the protection mechanisms that we need to go into, right? So it goes beyond just a product level security that's needed um, to, to really deliver a full and comprehensive security framework to an environment. Um, you know, if I talk, think about a few other things um, that we have, um, I mentioned the, the administrator identification or servers, our Dell EMC storage systems, our networking products, um, VX Rail, we all have various robust administrative identification and authentication capabilities. Many of these are role-based. Um, so for example, with VX Rail, you, um, now that we are 100% using our uh, plug-in to vCenter, we can use the role-based authentication controls that vCenter provides with VX Rail. Um, and in, an, in our um, next upcoming release in a, just a few days here that we announced back at VMworld last month. Um, we're going to have some two-factor authentication capabilities that we also have um, within vCenter as well. So just some great ways that we're adding in new ways of doing um, administrator identification within VxRail. So this building of cybersecurity, hopefully you see that um, it, it requires more than just a product level approach, it also requires this corporate discipline level approach. Um, and, you know, we want to take a look at this and, and kind of unpack each side of the product security that we're doing as well as some of the corporate discipline and processes that we have um, within Dell EMC. On the product security side of things, it all starts with um, our supply chain assurance, the components that go into um, a VX rail, right? Um, and how do we make sure that the components that are getting into the product, the people that are touching the product or the people that are supposed to be touching at every point um, throughout the supply chain um, and making sure that we've got the control points to be able to log those things, track it, um, be able to go back if there was let's say a breach of a shipping container, um, that we get a manifest report and there's an issue, we're able to track that back through some of our supply chain assurance mechanisms and processes. It's also things like making sure that we have a very secure development life cycle, code being properly checked in, checked out, um, source code being obtained in legitimate manners, not from open um, web locations, et cetera having vulnerability response um, processes as well as um, identified parties that will be pulled into those response teams should vulnerabilities be exposed as well as the product capabilities that are built in um, to VxRail specifically. I do want to take a look at what a typical vulnerability re response process would look like. Um, and, and there's a lot of information on this slide. It's a great example of all the things that, that we do. Um, should there be a response that's reported? Um, now, responses can come from a number of different places. It could be a customer escalation, public disclosures, um, various secure, security alert monitoring. It could be our very own uh, VxRail security team. Um, that identifies something that's not quite right. Regardless of where that um, new finding comes from, um, we feed that into the Dell EMC Product Security Response Center, um, which will then spin up the VxRail Vulnerability Response Team if it's something that we need to address. That team goes into investigation mode immediately with VxRail engineering, uh, with VMware um, engineering teams, and they've got their very own response um, process called product security, and it's IRT um, for short after that. Um, 
but it, it's another um, response team construct, very similar design approach. It's an iterative process that goes through the investigation, the remediation efforts, and verifying that we have um, resolved whatever that vulnerability might be. And we work very closely hand in hand through the entire test re-automation of everything that we are doing with VxRail to make sure that that vulnerability has been closed with what we are doing. And then the back end of that process is what gets released out to you all, our end customers, through security advisories, knowledge-based articles, security updates, um, the, the various um, patches that are need, needed. And in the case of VxRail, anytime there's a single patch of let's say an Intel driver. We verify every single thing top to bottom at every layer of our stack, hardware and software, to ensure that that one vulnerability fix doesn't create other downstream issues. So we're spinning again that full stack, fully integrated bundle, if you will, of all the known good state components that need to be updated inclusive of that security update very, very powerful so that you don't need to, to go back through um, test and dev labs and try to figure out, okay, which, which patches do I need that are compatible with the new vulnerability um, security update? That's all taken care of by our engineering and response teams with what we're doing with VxRail. Our supply chain assurance um, is, again, very, very robust. We do um, things like having um, control measures to protect physical um, sites as well as information and personnel. We do things to make sure that we ensure the, the product is received by the customer is the exact product that was shipped out from our door, um, as well as making sure that it operates as intended during some of those things like the first run and implementation experience. Um, we've got a very in-depth um, defense approach um, that's also uh, a, a defense in breadth, right? So we, we look at it very deep, very wide, multiple layers of control across the supply chain to make sure that we've got the confidence in, in not only the process, but the controls um, throughout the way. A um, few other things that we do in the supply chain, um, for example, in our factories, we have a transported asset protection association facility security requirements. These are things like closed circuit cameras, access controls, um, they're continuously guarded entries and exits. We use tamper evident packaging, um, a, a number of different ways and layers of protection, even through how the product is packaged and, and shipped out through our, our supply chain. Um, and we do that with both our hardware, um, which is a little bit easier to, to kind of visualize, but also the software and the mechanisms that we do to make sure that our factories have that very safe, secure heart, uh, software that our engineering teams have designed and built. On the continuous security development side of things, um, you know, these are treadmill things that we consistently look at each and every release. And, and we make sure that there are clean paths forward in the automation that we build into VxRail. So we are constantly reevaluating if we need to go back to common criteria, what impacts we might have to our um, product security configuration guides. What do we need to do to modify some of our STIG compliant um, scripting and hardening um, guidance that we provide? On the engineering front, how do we make sure that um, our, our SDLs are current and the vulnerability response um, action sets and processes are updated with new product capabilities that we might have so that we can um, more efficiently and quickly turn vulnerability responses that might be identified uh, from any of those various um, entry points that I mentioned previously as well as making sure that we've got the, the product security office aware of what we are doing through governance as well as some of the um, secure building and, and design um, of the product. So very much ways that, that we look at this each and every release, uh, making sure that there's not anything that's changed not only in the product offering but in the, the ways that we operate as a company. Um, to ensure that security is, is appropriately addressed in every way um, that we can imagine. 
If we look at the security, um, secure development life cycle, um, you know, the, the amount of discipline and expertise that we apply here, um, you know, it, it's so that we can deliver as best as we can the most secure uh, products possible. Our secure development lifecycle process, that SDL that I mentioned, is used by our development teams to define, design, develop, test, release, and maintain all our various code types. Um, it's not just a VxRail thing. This is a, a process that gets applied across Dell EMC. Um, but I, I think it's helpful to understand the amount of rigor that does go into this from our, our VxRail offering set and, and some of the folks that are specifically focused on it like um, like Andrea here on the call. We also are, are a party is, um, that, that participates in safe code um, as well as um, some of the, the software assurance forums um, that are out there. Um, our leadership teams are, are central in, in participation with many of those organizations to make sure that we are sharing best practices, learning from other organizations, um, figuring out how others um, are, are finding out about threats, how people are trying to access environments, you know, the processes that they're using to uh, mitigate that, resolve them so that we can take those best practices um, with our best practices and build an even more secure um, development lifecycle process. And we do proactive steps through all of this to make sure that we are constantly deploying securely and remain securely um, the software that is built in throughout all of these different offerings. We also do things like validate through testing, uh, making sure that we've got the proper controls and checkpoints in our supply chain, our factories, the product development cycle, the delivery, the implementation as well to ensure that we have a very secure delivery mechanism to the products that you all are buying from Dell EMC and specifically with the X-Rail. Now, one of the things that often comes up about this point is folks are like, well, VxRail can't solve everything. And, and you're absolutely right by that, right? We started with that in this framework saying that um, it's as much about the organizational um, ways that you respond to security threats and vulnerabilities, but there is a large ecosystem of security offerings just inside the Dell Technologies family, let alone outside in the entire IT industry. But if we look at you know this simple framework of products that help us to detect issues or respond to issues, recover from them, um, protect environments even further, there are a number of different offerings across Dell Technologies that can help you with this, right? And VX Rail um, works with many of these very closely. Uh, we work with their engineering teams. Um, you can um, check the vSphere compatibility guides for these. Um, to understand exactly um, the types of things that you can do with VxRail. Um, I mentioned VMware App Defense um, that, that's been out on the market, I think, less than a year now um, as a part of vSphere Platinum. Uh, very quickly, our teams went into how do we start to support App Defense, which is a SaaS based offering um, as part of VMware vSphere Platinum and make sure that we can actually utilize that with the X-Rail in, in a very meaningful way to help folks detect as well as respond a little bit um, to the threats that might be identified. Um, RSA, for example, has uh, managed services offerings um, where they have full um, expert teams that are on staff looking for um, threats that might be trying to access or propagate or, or, or even worse in the process and making sure that they kick off whatever the corporate response actions are um, with those various organizations that they're helping to protect. Um, it's easy to think about some of the traditional storage uh, data protection offerings like our uh, data domain offerings, data protection suites, recover point as ways that you can recover from whatever types of issues might um, come up as well. And then, of course, um, further ways that, that you can help um, secure environments with uh, the security offerings that are a part of VMware NSX or Horizon or the Dell EMC CloudLink offerings um, that are great ways to add additional levels of security into um, your environments. 
So I'll just reiterate um, and provide a, a few points in closing, and then um, I do have a couple of other um, places that you can get some more information um, as well. You know, I mentioned BX Rail, this very secure, resilient platform that can be used out at the edge, very small deployments. Um, it can be used in a core data center or in cloud scale, um, private cloud scale um, type deployments as well, whether it's with Pivotal or VMware PKS as a part of Cloud Foundation. Um, we have over 6,000 customers, um, very healthy annual revenue, growing faster than the market. And we have over 70,000 nodes deployed um, to date. We're also doing things, by the way, I didn't get into it in a whole lot in this presentation today, with infrastructure machine learning with um, one of our product uh, capabilities called VxRail ACE, which stands for Analytical Consulting Engine, where we're able to evaluate what's going on inside the landscape of our customers, not with your actual customer data, but with some of the machine data to understand how the environments are, are being kept secure um, and protected um, as best as they can. So um, if any of you are existing customers, I thank you um, and, and hope that you find that this is some great additional ways that you can expand the resiliency and security that you have with VxRail. Um, for any of you that are future customers, I hope this helps in some of the, the decision making that you need to be uh, making when it comes to VxRail and what we are doing with security um, as well. I mentioned a couple of things that you can do after the call here. Um, we've got two fantastic light boards on YouTube. Um, the first is a little bit of an overview, very similar to what I went through today, uh, but more in a whiteboard, whiteboard presentation style. Um, and then a follow-up to that one, which is how do you actually further secure and harden down, uh, reduce that profile and attack um, surface for your VxRail environments. Um, we also have a white paper that goes through everything that we talked about today. It's called VxRail Comprehensive Security by Design. Uh, it's recently been updated if you've um, looked at that in the past. I think we updated a couple weeks ago. Um, again, reiterates a lot of the points in here. And if you are an existing customer, um, we have a number of support documents around the product security configuration guide for VxRail, the STIG compliance guide, um, and, and some other things. I believe the document that I've got listed here is actually a publicly accessible one that references out to some of those. So you can get an idea on some of the, the best of our support documentation. Some of it does require a support login, uh, an actual customer login to get to. Um, and, and the product security documentation is one of those things. Um, for obvious reasons, we don't want those documents um, to be going out to non-customers who have um, some of the more Ill illegitimate um, needs to, to see that type of thing. 